You know, it's got a really interesting looking nebula and laser stars. This is very interesting compared to the ones that I've seen in the past. Have you guys seen that? You can kind of see the, uh, the projection it makes on, this, on the table right here. Computer, turn on star projector. Computer, set star projector to green. Computer, star projector purple. You'll be able to see within your Google Home or your Alexa all the preset colors you're able to voice command. Okay, so I have a Bliss Lights Skylight in Cobalt Blue side by side with our Smart Home Star Projector. We're gonna point these at my ceiling, which is a concrete ceiling about 10 feet from the ground from where we're gonna project it to. What we're going to be looking at is we're going to see the comparison between the Bliss Light Skylight to the Smart Star Projector. The camera recording settings will remain the exact same. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the Bliss Light Skylight on the left versus the Smart Star Projector on the right, both in their blue projection modes here. However, with the Smart Star Projector, when we are projecting all three colors, it puts out more light and these differences really start to dwindle in terms of brightness and light output as you're seeing. I don't know, my hair is definitely crazy. Woo, okay. All right, new day, new video. You know what, I'm not, I'm, it's, I'm digging the hair. Let's just roll with it. I'm just gonna roll with the hair. I think it adds to the video, if anything. Why not, right? I reviewed a very budget-friendly video projector by Ape Man. We're gonna take a look at their older brother, which is also a super budget projector, but this one, for a little teeny tiny bit more money, you're gonna get a lot more image quality out of this thing. Woo! There we go. So it has this metal top finish. It feels very high end. On the back here, so what do we got? We got an HDMI, we have two USB inputs, so I'm gonna be using a roll of photo paper as my sort of makeshift screen to test out the projector, which albeit isn't the best solution, but to run some tests, it's definitely good enough. I highly recommend ordering a proper projector screen for a nice flat surface to give the best results, or even shooting at a white wall would work too. In my case, I just didn't have those at my disposal. Or of course, you can just use those small feet to place it on a table so it doesn't move around, and then you can move the leg that comes out of the bottom and angle it upwards at your projector screen or your wall. So a really cool thing is that the keystone adjustment is actually electronic. You can play back video files, photos, and music. Listen, I can definitely recommend this projector, especially if you're looking to get into the projector market, if this is your first projector purchase. You know, pair it with a speaker system, mount it to your ceiling, get yourself a projector screen, and look, you've now got a home theater on the cheap with a good looking 1080p image, all at an exceptionally good price point. It definitely gets my thumbs up. What do, we, what do we think here? What do we think? Tranquil ambience. Ambiente tranquilo. Ambiance tranquil. Okay. Shine peaceful abstract light patterns. Customize the brightness and motion. Adjust the projection angles. The rotation button and the brightness button on the side of the unit here. This is the dark gray model. They also had it in a light gray color choice. Computer, turn off backlight. Ooh, 
All right, so now we should be able to turn this thing on and at least project it at the table. Okay, I have a good feeling about this. I think I'm gonna like this. Oh, this is rotation speed, I guess. Whereas the buttons on the Bliss Light Skylight are these big buttons located right here. Like I said, the Bliss Light Skylight was released originally and I have reviewed it already. It is one of the most popular star projectors you can buy on the market. All right, so let's jump right in. So I've set up the Bliss Lights Arc projected roughly eight feet away onto my ceiling. This is the wide shot. You can get a feel for the first time of what it kind of looks like within the context of a space. I think it has a very unique feel and look to it. Let's flip now to the same shot with the Bliss Light Skylight for comparison. Okay, so we're tilting up now on the Bliss Light Skylight. If you're not already familiar with the Bliss Light Skylight, so the laser within this unit splits itself into a ton of different smaller beams. And this is to try to recreate the feeling of the night's stars. So we flip back to the Bliss Lights arc here on a little bit of a different angle. And as opposed to the Bliss Lights skylight, the laser in the Bliss Lights arc is creating more of an abstract pattern on the roof. Now let's flip back to the Bliss Lights skylight in the same shot and the differences start to become more apparent between the two designs and how they look. So looking at the side by side here, it's immediately telling that the Bliss Light Skylight definitely covers a larger surface area. And I should mention that you can purchase the Bliss Light Skylight with green laser dots instead of the blue laser dots. I noticed that every time I turn on the Bliss Lights arc, the abstract pattern seems to be different but I kind of wanted to dig deeper and figure out what exactly is going on. So what I did was I set up a time lapse, but here's what it looks like if you play it back at 10 times real time or 1000% playback speed. That's 10 times the speed of real time. And it starts to become apparent how the abstract pattern moves and shifts. And it does really have this sort of 3D um, holographic feel as if it's suspended in midair. And here it is now. Yeah. It is the Govi Aura table lamp. Super simple. Ugh. Ooh, hello. Hello, little light. So as I suspected, the light is a 360 degree light. It's a very pleasing light. It's a very soft light. What happens when we click some button? Oh, wait a second. Wait, 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 okay. Computer, turn off key light. Computer, turn off backlight. Do you guys see what's happening here? Do you see, are you seeing this? Wait a second, no, this is too good. This is, okay. Okay, I'm already super impressed and we haven't even really dived into this thing. All right, what do these other buttons do? Let's try this one. This looks like daylight. We're just, okay, this is more of a nighttime tungsten, yellowish hue to it. We have music color and scene. Like, let's just go to color. All right, so we can change the color, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, light blue. Purple. We also have this color slider. There's a color wheel. That's pretty cool. There's a mode called fish tank and it kind of looks like there's little fish swimming around. Cherry blossom festival. This is the dancing. Breathe. This is, this is breathe. Again, this is, this is all under the app here. I like, wow. Cheerful. That's pretty cool. Man, this, this light is really cool. A sunset. Rainbow, Sunset Glow, Snowflake, Aurora, Forest, Ocean. Ooh, Ocean's cool. Yes, the Govi, the coveted Govi. It, it creates a nice soft light on my face even if I want to record with it. It has the option, if you were to line up a bunch of these things, they'd actually make a pretty cool video lighting as well. It can even do, it can even do camera color. You can take a picture of something it can take the colors of that photo and it can try to match those. In this video, I'll show you how to take your boring old room lighting and transform it into this. A scene set for a romantic evening full of lighting magic to help excite the senses. Computer, turn on studio. <gasps> Ha <laughs> ha 
Drum roll, please. Lighting tips, a lighting guide for setting the mood in a romantic context. Oh. Creating a sense of mood with lighting is all about creating a juxtaposition between dark and light, essentially. So shut off all the lights, and that's what I call starting with a blank canvas, all right? So now that you have a blank canvas, the first tip is going to be to use the lights that are available to you. And what I mean by that, I'm talking about floor lamps and table lamps. So we're gonna use this as our first primary source of lighting. And probably the most amount of light we're gonna add is probably gonna come from this source. So usually most people have a floor lamp or a some sort of table lamp. I would start with that. Even if you just have one, use that one, okay? If it's a colored RGB bulb, even better, you can experiment with that. But let's shut off all the lights and let's just start with a lamp of some sort. Okay, so the second tip is to get yourself some fairy lights. The reason they're called fairy lights is because they're very small little bulbs, very small sources of lights on a string. When you have a bunch of these together, they really do create a neat effect that can have sort of, for, for lack of a better term, sort of a magical feeling to them. Maybe that's where they get the term fairy lights, I don't know. We can also refer to them as string lights, that's fine too, but I found this really creates a nice vibe if we're going for like a romantic or, or just overall pretty evening uh, to use these sorts of lights. Okay, moving into tip number three now. This might seem like an obvious one, but they're forever popularized for a reason. We're talking about candles, or if you wanna bring it into the future, flameless candles, and they really do look like real candles, and they last a lot longer, they're a lot safer, and they really do help to add splashes of light here and there. As you have to remember, we're trying to create contrast through lighting. Today, I actually picked up some waterproof tea lights, those are also a type of flameless candle. So the really neat thing about that is you can integrate them into some sort of jacuzzi setting or if you're hot tubbing or you're in a bath setting, that can work too, that can have a really nice play. Now moving on to tip trick number four, it is a star projector. Now star projectors, I personally love star projectors because they're just a small little unit, a small product, a small device that adds a whole ton of ambiance to a scene or a setting. If you wanna go the distance, you know, get yourself a star projector. I've reviewed a ton of these on the channel already. So, okay, so my last tip here, now that we've set our scene, what's gonna go great with that star projector? You know, you wanna, you wanna really create this sort of like idealized moment with the star projector. Let's get a moon lamp, add in a moon lamp. I absolutely love moon lamps. There's a ton of different moon lamps you can get. You know, you can use this to add to a table setting, an end table perhaps, maybe a coffee table. You can use these moon lamps anywhere really and they, they provide a really soft lighting due to their shape. It's a spherical shape. I've done reviews on different moon lamps before, but I've, again, all the links are in the descriptions to get your hands on some of this stuff. But those are five tips right there that really help to create a scene, and in this case, a romantic context, that will really help to elevate the mood. Bonus tip, get yourself some rose petals. Garnish up your scene a little bit. You just dressed it with lighting, made it look nice. Why not even grab a fake rose? I saw this excellent fake rose. The rose is considered somewhat of, you know, a symbol for love. So take that as you will. Maybe you wanna throw that in there. That just about wraps us up for romance. I hope all these tips work out for you and you have a wonderful evening, whatever you're planning. You know, it's all about exciting the senses. So lighting is really an excellent way to do that. Try to get the other senses involved. Make it a sensuous experience. Put in the effort, it'll go a long way. Hopefully you guys will find this guide helpful. I know it's a bit of a departure from our regular style videos, but hey, I hope it helps. I hope you enjoyed. Rolling cameras, rolling cameras, rolling cameras. Hello and welcome everybody to the Future Space Collective. I had to throw on the NASA shirt because we are going for some space exploration in today's video.
now the Dark Skies DS1. <gasps> Let the adventure begin. This is not your typical $50 to $100 star projector that we've reviewed previously. As you can see, there are a bunch of constellation graphics on the unit itself, but it should it should really should slide in rather easily. If it's not sliding in rather easily, don't force it in, you're gonna break it. This is what everything looks like laid out. Very nice bag it comes with, with the Dark Skies embroidered logo. They have a variety of different inserts you can put into the projector. So let's blast off right now. Alrighty, so let's start with the physical aspects. The body itself serves as somewhat of a lamp, a night lamp, a table lamp, if you will, with the moon button on the base to turn on and off this lamp, along with the millions of stars printed right on the body to see that somewhat foreshadows the projection pattern of the 4.1 million star chrome disc that does come with the unit. So on the bottom of the unit, there's a heat sink with a fan that kicks on if the unit gets too hot. I really like the look of this, the aesthetic of it, you know, with the lights spilling out, it does look really spaceship-like, really futuristic-like. It really does complete the whole vibe. Same with the top of the unit, you know, where we have our projector lens and our rotating shooting star head. It's also really elegant looking. It's protected behind a dome-shaped piece of hard plastic. The whole unit is attached on a single rotating axis on the arm so you can point and angle the body at your projection surface. On this arm, on the other side of it, we have our main control buttons, which are nicely illuminated so you can see them in complete darkness. And in terms of projection options, there's a huge collection of discs directly made by Dark Skies that you can purchase from the website, from different planets to galaxies to even underwater stuff. Welcome everybody to the Future Space Collective. We have hit 10,000, 10,000 subscribers. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I'm just elated, I'm overcome with joy here. This is crazy, what a long way, what a long journey this has been. From posting a review, comparing three star projector videos, to now where we've entered a whole world of different products for imagination. There's a long, long way to go. Okay, so I thought for reaching 10,000 subscribers, we would do a little studio set tour of the unboxing set here, the main set I use. It takes about roughly a day or so to turn over the studio into this kind of main set. So I just thought I'd really quickly run you guys through what that looks like a little bit behind the scenes. So. Let's move the camera, the B camera, off. Okay, and we'll follow me along. Come, come, come. So we have kind of these three LED light bars that are four foot in size. I have done a video about them. So I have a total of about four of them and I just kind of place them in certain parts of the background. There's one there, there's one kind of underneath the TV sitting on the desk here. And then there's one obviously beside the couch. 
And then the fourth one is behind this frosted piece of glass here that gives us this look here. I try to change up the backgrounds on the TV and the monitors for every shoot. I try to constantly keep evolving this. So right now I'm running the Govi Aura on the background and we're running the two levitating bulbs beside the Govi Aura. We'll get that spinning here. Then we got our ghost light up top. We got our levitating earth right here. We're running a laser projector in the background here to kind of get this, this pattern here. So the background is constantly evolving as I get new products. I like to switch it up. All of this stuff that you see back here, I put links to all the products in every one of my videos in the description. So all these kind of cameras up here, they all have sentimental value to me. That was actually the first camera I ever laid my, my hands on, the first video camera when I was like 10 years old. They're the dad video camera for Christmases and birthdays, but that's kind of what fueled the passion into video for me, that camera. So it's really cool that I still have it. This camera right here is actually one of my favorites. It's, uh, it's my grandfather's camera. He's not with us anymore, but um, you know, he was a very, very interesting man. And he was also very, very creative in many ways. So I feel like I somewhat take after him and I, I'm really happy that I got his camera and I can show it in the background here, the channel. And then we got the neon signs and stuff. I've already kind of gone through here. This is my other kind of recording setup uh, for when I'm sitting at the desk here. This is our other LED light bar actually right there. And if we turn around to the other side, and then we have the two camera rigs kind of right here, the main camera and now the B camera. Welcome everybody to the Future Space Collective where we explore the world of products for imagination. And we have the Aperture softbox here as our key light. Computer, turn off key light. Computer, turn off backlight. Do you guys see what's happening here? We have our backlight over there, and then this is sort of like the monitoring station um, where I can see the main angle and I can monitor the levels. If you, wanna, if you wanna come back here, the studio is wired up fully for all the power outlets. Um, everything is pretty low power draw, you know, LEDs and just, you know, camera batteries and stuff and monitors, but everything's kind of been optimized for the space to be able to kind of shift it to whatever the need may be. We got the cameras outputting to the monitors and, and our whole audio um, monitoring system. The levitating moons, of course, as everybody knows. So I'm actually running a second star projector here um, to just kind of fill in some color in these sort of cubby holes right here. This is what we're working with at around 10K. I'm curious if we can get to that 100K, then I'll do a full studio tour. I'll show the entire place and I'll go into more detail about everything. It's been a long way in terms of building out the channel and who knows where it will go in the future. It could pivot, it can twist and turn. I hope that I can explore a ton of different ideas and I'm open to feedback on what you guys wanna see for a channel around this idea. Computer, turn on coffee. Computer, turn on desk. Computer, turn on TV. Turn on ghost neon. Turn on stereo. It's totally real. It's not a trick of the camera. This is actually happening. I'm actually controlling my studio with my voice. How, you may ask? Boom, these things right here. So what is it? What does it do? How does it work? Super simple. This little gadget here is one of the most basic things you can buy to start bringing your space into the future. All it is, is a smart switch. It basically turns on or turns off whatever you have plugged into it. It connects via Wi-Fi, you control it through an app, and then you can use a Google Home or Amazon Alexa for voice control to control these things. So these are the little secret weapon and what I use to basically power on the majority of devices in my studio here that don't have smart capabilities natively built in. 
So I have this Edison light bulb here to show you as an example. When we plug it in, it turns on, right? So any device you have, this light bulb could be any device as long as it is able to power on uh, as soon as you plug it in, that's how you know you'll be able to use a smart switch. So for example, if we now plug in our smart switch into our outlet here, and now we're gonna plug our Edison bulb into the smart switch. So boom, the Edison bulb is now plugged into the smart switch. Now we can control this switch with the Smart Life app on our phone, just like that, just turn it on. What's really cool about this is that it'll work anywhere in the world. You don't have to be connected to your home Wi-Fi uh, if you want to control it with your phone via the Smart Life app. Now, I know the title says control any device with your voice. So if we want to take it one step further, we get an Amazon Alexa or a Google Home and we add that into the mix. So this right here is an Echo Dot. Basically, this Echo Dot will run Alexa and we can give voice commands to the Echo Dot and that'll trigger Alexa to perform the command. I've changed my wake up word to computer. So you'll see when I say the wake up word, it triggers the Echo Dot and it's listening for a command. I've named the smart switch Edison ball right here. So when we say computer, turn on Edison ball, it's gonna trigger the switch to power on, which our device is gonna then turn on. Rolling everything here. See, my sweater is very reflective in the back, you know? All right. This is probably one of the nicest looking lamps done so far on the channel. I'm just gonna go ahead, pop that in there. Then there's this little screw. Man, that base is heavy. Let's plug this thing in for the first time, see how she goes. The adapter, of course, the BenQ branding on it, very nice. Oh, it's, did you see that? Did I just touch? Oh, it's a touch, it's a touch lamp. So you touch this ring here to turn it on and off. Look at that. It is such a funky looking desk lamp, man. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. I've kind of turned down the settings on the camera so we can get a better look and it's not being blown out. I'm absolutely in love with the look of this lamp. It's so funky looking to me and it has really smart modes. It gives you just the settings that you need. You know, you need to brighten or dim it. It's got you. You know, you need to change the color temperature. You know, it's got you if you want to do that. Very responsive ring. Long press, that's for computer mode. And uh, again, for book reading mode, right? Look at the curves on this thing. Look, look at these curves. You see that? It's not so easy to get a curved piece of, of metal is what it feels like, some sort of metal. And then the, the, the actual LEDs are, are diffused nicely underneath. You can, you know, adjust it in a variety of ways. And it's just really smart. It's giving you the features you want and it's doing them at a premium level, right? You got the dim, you got the color adjustment, brightness. You know, really that's all you would need. And it's got this wide angle of throw. It's got the sensor to adjust to your ambient, you know, lighting. It's a really good table lamp. Just as we can create mood with lighting by painting the dark scene with controlled splashes of light to create contrast, a similar principle applies with texture. I was looking around my own space here, taking in all the different textures. There's wood, brick, marble, leather, glass, and concrete. As much as I felt there was a good variety of different textures filling the space, I felt like there was still something missing. Something more organic to soften the space. 
spice it up a bit. So I decided to get an artificial hedge wall. You can get these artificial hedges in panels. They usually come in 20 inch or 40 inch square panels from what I've seen. And you can get them in a variety of different styles, mimicking different types of plants and textures. You'll need a tape measure, marker, pair of scissors, and some way to affix the box panels to the wall. I think the simplest and most effective way is a staple gun, so that's how I'll be attaching mine to the wall. Oh, and of course, you'll need your box hedges. Mine were shipped to me in bags like these. I bought three 40-inch panels. Once you get the panels, you're probably gonna wanna measure again so you know where to mark your panels in order to cut them to size. So once you have your measurements, use a marker to mark where you need to cut the panels, and then grab your pair of scissors and cut the panels to size. The ability to use scissors helps to keep everything nice and simple. The nice thing about these panels is because of their design, any mistakes you might make in cutting a straight line gets hidden just because the foliage of the leaves kind of kind of cover the grid anyways. Just a little tip when you're planning to install your hedge panel. Aim to place the sides you cut so they are hidden inwards towards another wall. Therefore, if you have a situation like mine where the wall you're installing on is going to have a visible edge, you can align the perfectly straight side of the hedge panel with the visible straight edge of your wall. Make sure to save all the excess pieces of paneling that you've cut because we're gonna use those again later. Don't throw them out just yet. Then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just take your time and place these little bits into any bald spots or any areas that could use a few more of these leaves on your wall until you're happy with the final result. Now I had a neon sign up on this wall prior and I really think that adding in this artificial edge wall is gonna really help both the neon sign pop more, but it's also gonna spill some light onto the actual artificial hedges and kind of illuminating them at the same time. Make sure to pick up some long nails or screws to hang your neon sign, compensating for the extra inch or so the hedges are gonna take up. I had to get longer screws for my sign from how it was hanging previously on the bare wall. The hedges also serve a functional purpose as well with the neon sign in being able to now hide the power cable that the neon sign will require. Not only does it add texture and contrast with the illuminated glass of the neon and the sort of organic green of the artificial hedges, but the hedges also help to hide the cables, which is key. Carefully staple your neon sign power cable down your wall, creating a pathway beneath the foliage. The trick to this is making sure you don't catch any of the leaves. So brush them aside to create a clear pathway for the cable as you mount it down the wall with staples. So with that said, don't forget to pick yourself up an extension cord if you do need one and your neon sign power cord isn't long enough itself. So once you've mounted your neon sign and the power cables, you're gonna wanna do a final pass at using the excess foliage pieces we've cut from earlier, and again, going over your wall and filling in any last patchy areas, especially around the parts where we've just run the cables. So you're left with a hedge wall that's looking lush, full, and plentiful. I'm a big fan of the neon sign and hedge wall combo. It makes for an absolute eye-catching aesthetic. Before I go ahead and sort of reassemble the furniture to where it was, I'm actually gonna light the space a few different ways and do a little photo shoot here just to test out the variety of looks I'm able to create with this new hedge wall and as well take a thumbnail image for this video as adding in an artificial green hedge wall opens up a ton of new possibilities in terms of photography and content creation. It's a popular backdrop, it's a popular look and an absolute great addition to the studio here now that we have the hedge wall for shooting and such. So moving forward, 
Now it's time to reassemble the studio back to its standard configuration so I can film the epic final sequence of everything finished. The wall with all the furniture in place, cables hidden, and the lighting dialed in. I like the boxes on them. So it looks like you kind of have to build these lights yourself. Maybe that's why they say DIY on the box. Give me one of those things. Give me some gold dolphin rings. Oh, too funny. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try to figure this out. Let's, let's take everything out of the bags. Installation steps. So I think the, the one, the, the circular one goes at the base. Maybe we're just supposed to connect them together. I'm assuming this is going to be the lamp arm, which is going to hold the LED strip. Like, it looks to be a good five feet tall, actually. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. I think we're going to take the actual LED strips now. Tear off 3M glue centrifugal paper. Okay, then. Pass through that thread hole. So when you're done putting the LED strip in the arm of the lamp, it should look something like so. Take this piece of plastic off and we will do our last piece of diffusion here. All right, same thing, kind of align it. It's not the easiest thing to do, but stay patient with it, work it in from one side and then it all kind of comes full circle here, tightening everything up there. These connectors plug into each other and you'll notice that there is a bit of like a ridge on the top and so that clips together so they don't come apart. Power brick. There we go. There we go. Computer, turn off backlight. Okay. This, this is the remote here. Red, green, and blue. Woo, 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 woo. Don't forget how freaking big this thing is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, buddy! Uh, what does flow do? Try flow. Oh, this is flow. You guys seen that? And this is called chase. Whoa, hello. And this is called roll. Don't forget guys, this is like a pretty large light bar and it's going to be much, much cheaper to buy one of these corner floor standing light bars as opposed to my professional grade um, light bars over here. This is more of a consumer friendly version that comes with the stand. It's more user friendly and it's more cost effective. And here it is now. It is the hang balance lamp. So these two little balls are actually the switch of the light 
you just kind of connect them to each other and it completes the circuit and the light will light up. Of course, when it's plugged in, it did not come with a power brick. The force of the magnets are actually completing the circuit. Just like so. It's a really neat effect. I thought it's a really cool lamp. I mean, look at it. It just looks super futuristic, super modern. I'm a big fan of the visual aesthetic. It has these warm LEDs to it, so that's a nice touch. It emits this really nice kind of soft light in, in an interesting way. So I think it's a prime candidate for a backdrop or something like that, a desk lamp, a nice piece of decor. It's beautiful, it's modern, it's well designed, it looks cool. It kind of makes these interesting shadows on the table. See, see these two shadows? Just the way, because of the way it's designed here. Ooh. Yup. Like two little moons. And it's cool when you like, you just like, you know, you can make up your own game, but it's got, it's got quite a bit of tension. I don't know, it looks, I just like the way it looks. There's something oddly satisfying about a flat string, seeing it straight like, like magic kind of uh, it's it's really I don't know it's it's the sort of thing that I enjoy okay so that's what we're looking at on the inside I'm telling you I used to be the Tetris master like I'm really curious if this is gonna how this is gonna work if you can configure it in any way or what the deal is so I don't know does it just start lighting up if you attach things to it oh my god it does look at that Magic, it really is magic. Now I gotta get it, why they call it the magic block. Wow, I guess all these, all these parts are conductive and then you can kind of configure this in any way you want and it's gonna light up for you. I am actually quite enjoying this much more than I thought I would. I gotta be honest with you. It's pretty cool actually how it, it just like kind of lights up if you connect all the bricks together. Even on the box, there's all these different configurations. I actually think it's it's much cooler than I thought it would be. What's the best configuration we can come up with? Oh, 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 oh. The red piece is like, <laughs> not enough co contact points here on the red piece on the top. This is not recommended how you should build your light, but who am I to tell you how to build your Tetris lamp thing? until it all goes kaput like that. Endless configurations, all nostalgic, all reminiscent. piece of decor that I saw while I was browsing the web. Let's check it out. Introducing Moving Sandscapes. They are abstract frames of sand fused with some sort of liquid, whereas the bubbles create random barriers and blockages to force the sand inside to fall slowly and in somewhat of a random way at random speeds. Sometimes it's just a trickle of sand, while other times the gap widens and the sand falls faster. So you're always left with these somewhat mysteriously alien looking landscapes that are always morphing and changing over time. Look at this. It's like a little like mini fridge. Honestly, you could just keep it in its original packaging and it looks like a collector's piece as is. The packaging, excellent. This one mimics a tiny little retro computer and this one mimics a retro television set. Peel the plastic, everybody's favorite part. Ooh, there's a lot of plastic on this thing. Oh yeah, okay. 
Oh, look at the back. Look at the details on this thing. It looks like it came straight out of mid-century modern style design with its retro TV vibes. Boop. Let's open our mini fridge and there it is. Let's slide this thing out. Wow, that's a, it's a cool case. The first unveiling. So it's the Devoom. We have the Devoom TV Max and the Ditto Plus. Certainly a collector's piece. Cute little stickers. So there's an app that works with the display, the speaker display. Jumping ball. Oh, it's on the display. So let's get rid of the jumping ball and find something more appropriate. Green square shuffle. All right, so I just typed in future and let's see, this is a motherboard animation. Oh look, this is like a little back to the future animation here. Back to the future, Marty McFly. All right guys, so I've spent quite some time now with both of these devices and man, they're some of the most fun little pieces of tech that I've ever tried. They not only look excellent and really add a lot of visual aesthetic to the space, but they are also feature packed. So I'm gonna quickly tell you now all the features these things can do. So first and foremost, they are a pixel art display. What does that mean? Well, you can sort of create your own little pixel art masterpieces from within the app with the LED editor. You can convert images and photos and make animations out of that. Or you can choose from the massive gallery of animations from the Devoom community. So it's also kind of like a social network in a way where people are sharing their own pieces of artwork and you can have the display sort of cycle through new animations all the time to keep things interesting. Of course, you can customize what you want the display to show and have it cycle through different channels all through within the app. So there's a ton of customizability there to really have the animations match to your own style and personality. Have social media notifications. So when you receive a text, DM from your favorite social media platforms, your device can let you know. It can show you the daily weather report using this screen. It can be used as a scoreboard if you're playing a game. Speaking of games, it has mini games built in where it'll use the screen as the display some other things it has is you can measure the ambient noise level in the room. It has a stopwatch and a timer. It also has a ton of these little audio tools, like you can play a little virtual piano or different instruments. So in this first stand, what you're supposed to do is you're just supposed to put them in like that. The cable just, you know, comes out of the front. Or of course, alternatively, you can mount the light bars to the back of a monitor or a TV or a wall or a speaker or something of that nature. So I already have the Govi app installed. Similar to the Govi Aura, the Govi table lamp. Let's see what, ha what scenes, movie, candlelight. You can see the scene modes a little better from this shot. There's tons to choose from. You can create your own scene modes. You can download presets of other people's all through the Govi app. But these were a few of my favorites. And then of course, the Flow Pro, they have this video option. So the camera's not installed, but we'll go test that out now. Alrighty, time to install our Govi Flow Pro light bars. I've taken the included mounts with the 3M sticky tape and I've now affixed the light bars on the back of my TV. As you can see, I've already had light strips on there previously. To perfectly install the camera in the center of the TV, what I did was simply open a document, center justified the text, drew a little plus sign in there, and now I know that's where the center of the TV is. So here I am affixing the included camera to the top of the TV mount, and then attaching it into the included receiver, and plugging everything in. So now we can take a look at the demo of how the included camera reads the colors on the TV and it sends that information to the light bars to match the screen to sort of enhance your viewing experience. So you can see the orange arrows on screen are pointing to the Govi light that is being created from the Flow Pro light bars and it works pretty well. It aims to not only match the colors on screen but also the brightness levels.
Computer, turn on pro lights. Welcome everybody, boom. And here it is now. This is the Sega Homestar Flux. Yes, that's right. The same Sega, the same Sega, Sonic the Hedgehog. They also make home planetariums apparently. These awesome little drawings on the side that are kind of reflective. And you know, there, there are pictures all over the box. I gotta hand it to them. The box design is great on this thing. So it actually, from what I understand, it just comes apart like that. I like that. It's got this like shiny, shiny Sega logo. Sega Flux Home Planetarium. All right. Ooh, all right. So this is what we're looking at here. Pretty nice upon first open. It kind of looks like a giant eyeball or something of that nature. It's kind of like this black matte finish to it, this black matte feel. And then it has this pretty sturdy base to it. And then we have a bunch of buttons on what is assumably the front here. And this is the tray where we load in our discs. Sega also sent me a ton of discs to try out with the projector. This is their 17 disc pack, I believe, which has a bunch of different uh, patterns. Look, there's a bunch of air balloons there, hot air balloons, flowers and butterflies. What do we got? Gigantic telescope. Here it is now. It is the Kinetrica Square Wave. Wow, you know, that's, uh, that's a good sturdy base. It's the foundation for which everything is built upon, right? So this is the internal box. I don't know if this gives you a clue to what's about to happen and what we're about to see, but the boxes are slowly getting nicer. Ooh, okay, black and gold, I like it. Classic color combination. Oh man, look at this thing. Now, I don't actually know how it attaches. Whoa, it does all these crazy different, you know, mesmerizing optical illusions and patterns. Square Wave is a unique piece of kinetic art inspired by the Fibonacci sequence, the basic structure that is the makeup of every living thing. Didn't know that. Just spin it to get surprised and mesmerized by a series of mind-bending optical illusions. 21 connected metal rods curve and mutate unexpectedly. 21, did you say? I wonder if I'm even, oh, maybe it goes the other way. Okay, I think, I think we're, okay, there we go. There we go. There's your Fibonacci inspiration. Wow, look at that. Oh, 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 okay, there it is. There it is. There's the smile. What do you think's in this envelope? Okay, I guess that's if you wanna hang it, whoa. This thing is a trip. I got I do I do got to admit it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty weird. It says to spin it to get all these unique patterns. So apparently this thing is somewhat also like a fidget spinner from what I'm told. There you go. Oh, did you see that? Whoa, this is sweet. Okay. That's pretty cool. I don't know. You see the spiral action, right? You see that? So you can see how, you know, if you freeze it in time for a moment, 
it does all these like that's oh man it, it really is quite neat and and you see this sort of spiral formation near the top there that gives it its its, its weird movement and I, I totally see you know when they first said Fibonacci sequence I was a little I'm like how are they gonna do that in a sculpture but it's totally making sense now I love it when they, oh yeah oh ladies and gentlemen coming straight from Japan boom do you know what it is? They took earphones and they're like, what if we made earphones huge? Let's just make huge earphones and make it into speakers. And I guess they all had a chuckle and they're like, well, why not? Let's do it. They did it. And here it is for you today. Look at this box, it's a Japanese product. This box is so big. I got to stand up to unbox it because that's how big these headphones are. Ugh. Just the thought of what's inside of this box, it makes me chuckle. Maybe it's just something about the Japanese, man, because the last Japanese product we did was the Sega Homestar Flux. It also had a really crazy unboxing experience. Look at this thing, man. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. Oh my goodness. Look at the, you know how headphones, they have like, you know, the volume rockers, the, the volume. That was the knife, still open. It's literally a giant volume rocker to match the giant earphones. Let's, we gotta get it out of the plastic here to, all right, we got, we got one out. We got one of these things out. I'm loving the black and gold finish on it. It doesn't quite fit my ear, but let's, let's, let's fully unpackage this thing. Oh my goodness. What do I do with all this plastic? <laughs> so much plastic oh my goodness that was so unnecessary but alas we have unveiled our ginormous headphones all right let's let's get let's get organized here we also have what also comes with the speakers is these bases here now they're they're apparently cork bases so the idea is these are like little sort of stands for the speakers. You can actually remove the headphone uh, like earpiece, even though it's not a real earpiece, obviously. You can see it's not quite in the center. There's a bigger chunk of the base. We're gonna actually sit our, our headphone in it like that. Boom. And we're gonna put our little foamy pieces back on. This product really cracks me up. I don't know if that's evident in the video so far, but I'm having a hoot of a time filming this right now. But there's a little R, there's a right, and there's a left. So just like you would have, you know, put them into your ears, a right and a left. This is the volume control, which actually really controls the volume, just like you would. It's an exact replica. In fact, I believe they actually make the same earphones regular size and they just why not make a pair that's huge apparently it's six times larger than their than their earphones so it just plugs in with the standard 3.5 millimeter stereo jack we're gonna plug that in i'm gonna plug this end into power okay whoa whoa <laughs> okay i it startled the crap out of me. That was totally unexpected. Whoa! Whoa! So okay, you do need to plug this into power. We got we got a few things plugged in. So we have our we have our unit connected. So this is the power switch right here. Boom. And it turns on. And the, the volume rocker works really well. It's got a really oh You know what? They're not even fit. They sound great. I'm, I'm actually thoroughly surprised. I'm going to face them towards me this time. Wow. Okay. I love it. I think it's great. It's fun. It's playful. It sounds really good. Thank you. 
the headphone-shaped speaker by Elcom. It's finally inside. Let's bring it in. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to just slam it down. It is a glass table after all. Brought my ketchup socks just for today's unboxing. You'll see why in a moment. I don't know how I'm gonna get this thing out here. Do so these just slide out? Oh, I broke it. Um, actually, they're nails sticking out. Oh, okay. Now, how am I gonna get it out of the box, box? I think we can slide it out if I cut the cardboard box. Look at that. Just gonna yank it out. Again, if you're gonna do that, I advise you be very cautious of the nails. Looking very forward to, uh... oh, that paint color though. That slick red. They call this the splinter maker. This piece of wood here. Again, being very cautious of the wood and the nails. Ooh, got some weight to it. I think this is the first time we're gonna see me break a sweat here on the channel. Probably don't wanna lift it. Oh boy. I think I can just slide this thing out, judging by what I see underneath here. I'll watch out for these nails. But I think that was a good plan. Whew. What a journey that was. Hi, honestly, I'm sweating here, guys. That, that table weighs a lot. You know, it's furniture at the end of the day. It's furniture. I actually picked up a new area rug. Kind of like reminds me of a giant ink blot. You know, like the roar shark tests. Rorshire? I don't know what the word is. Okay, so I've gotten the foam off the feet of the table and I actually noticed the table has wheels. So I'm gonna try to bring it onto our rug, unveil this. Oh wow, look at that paint job. Woo -wee! That is one red table. Okay, so now that we've tidied up our space, we can take in the beauty of this table and all its glory. It's probably gonna show fingerprints. That's the price you pay if you want something shiny, glossy, that has a pop that just pops off, you know? It's great, it's amazing. I've had the table for about three to four months now and I absolutely love it. I love the look and it's extremely, extremely functional for me. It looks great in the space, looks great in the videos. And it's really great for me that now I have for my main shooting table, I can lift this thing up, put my other tabletop on it, or I can use it when somebody comes over as a desk or as a coffee table, a dining table. If you're living in a condo or a small space, you really might wanna consider one of these tables. It's revolutionary in a lot of ways to have something that can transform. So you don't need two tables, you just have one table that can serve multiple purposes. And it's really this new way of thinking that I, I adhere to of this sort of like modularity. Furniture as modularity, it can change and shift depending on how you need to use your space. It's a pretty robust system. It can support up to 15 pounds. That's right, a 15 pound camera rig. You can sit this and mount this to this Arc2 system. Of course, as you would imagine, it comes with a bunch of extra features such as app control. It has this awesome face tracking mode that you can use in correlation with your phone or it will actually you know, follow your face around the room if you want to kind of use as a second shooter on its own. 
It has this really handy mounting mode to be able to mount it or remove it easily to different tripod heads. And you can also power your camera from the built-in battery in the ARC system itself. Of course, if you have the proper cable and dummy battery. So the slider is really cool because the system works together seamlessly and it adds a third axis of movement. So now you can pan, tilt, and slide all at the same time. So lastly, we can add a fourth axis of movement with the Rhino Focus system. So this mounts right into the Arc 2 pan and tilt head, and it allows us to now control our lens movement by either you know, mounting it to the focus ring or the uh, focal zoom ring of your lens. So now you can pan, tilt, slide, zoom, or change focus. And that really opens up all the different axes of movement and is all fully automatable with the phone or just with the joystick here itself. You can buy these items separately or as a kit. A lot of people might find a lot of value in just the Arc 2 pan and tilt head itself and everything it can do. Okay, so I'm actually gonna lower everything, the whole system down a little bit to get a better framing. Okay, so I've lowered the tripod. Now I'm gonna tighten up the supporting stands once again, and this is gonna give a much better shot. Okay, so we are in set keyframe mode. So basically, we're gonna move our camera to the starting position. Just use the joysticks, okay. So we'll roll it down to one end here. Once we have our first keyframe, all you do is press down, boom. And we're gonna set, that's now set. So now it says to set keyframe number two. So we're gonna move this to the second position we want. So I'm gonna bring it to the other end of the slider here. So once we have it set, we're just gonna click down, boom, set keyframe number two. So once we hit start move, it's actually gonna bring it into our first keyframe position, and then it's gonna display on screen, ready to go. So basically, we're gonna triple check all of our settings here. I'm gonna actually just set the spot focus with the camera. Of course, you can use the focus and you know integrate that into your keyframes. I don't personally use the focus too much because my cameras are pretty good with autofocus. If you do have a camera or you want to use manual focus with a manual focus lens, cinema lens, works great, we can do that. But once we're ready to go, um, you just hit start and now it's going to conduct the move. Here it goes. And of course, because we do have the loop mode enabled, it will just keep doing the move back and forth until you stop it. It's totally smooth, totally silent, totally cinematic. As you can see, it's not too fast to set up. You just throw it on, turn on, program your moves, and you're good to go. It does come with legs to use on its own. I've taken it on camping trips. It is robust. It is an awesome little system. The fact that it's so compact. The Arc 2 system can work to assist in time-lapse work as well, if you're into that sort of thing. So you can program all these different types of shots in a time-lapse over a long period of time. So you can have the move you know, be conducted over you know, 12 hours if you wanted, it will slowly move it over that time for time lapses. So I've now shown you how I've used it in my Future Space Collective videos. So next time you see a shot like that, you'll be able to spot it out and know how it was done. Or maybe if you watch some of the previous videos, you'll see a lot of shots that I've used that were made with this same system. Boom, and here it is now. It is the BenQ GV30. Ooh. Check out this box design. All right, so that's what we're looking at upon first open in this gray case that was in the box. It feels very high end, like it's got a fair amount of weight to it. It's even got a tripod thread on the bottom. I love when they have that. So yeah, it comes with this great little base. So you can point it wherever. You can point it fully up as well. Oh, look at that, is it magnetic? It's magnetic. BenQ. Using the BenQ GV30 over the past few weeks 
has really brought back a sense of excitement in a piece of tech. So due to its body design, inbuilt streaming, battery, clever mounting, and all of its features and functions, I started looking at this projector as not only as a portable entertainment system, but also a tool for creating atmosphere or unique environments. Paint your space with light, fake fireplaces, windows, stars, skylines, or futuristic settings projected anywhere. And this is all due to the fact that it is portable and it is very functional. This came in the mail today. Whoa. Wow, I think this is the biggest thing we've had here on the table. It's one of those boxes that has a really heavy duty staples. It smells like fresh scooter in there. At this point, I'm just using sheer strength now. Come on, use those muscles. Okay. All right. Okay. What are we looking at here? Woo! Ugh. Okay. This thing's not very light, I gotta tell you. I'm unboxing a vehicle here on the channel today. How's that for madness? I'm just like really curious if it'll just turn on out of the box. Let's just, let's just try this thing. Try not to, try not to die. Or if the tires need air. Oh! How do you make this thing go? Probably a good idea to put the brake on properly. Oh, it's even got a little bell. I think you have to actually get some momentum first to make it go. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, it's got brakes. All right, all right. So out of the box, it just seems to work. Okay, so let's dive in deeper, how this thing works. All right, so we have our Turbo Ant X7 Pro. We're gonna ride it around, test it out. I've been using this thing for a little while now. It's super fun, I gotta say. Smooth ride, it's punchy, it's got some great acceleration to it. So let's start with the wheels. It has 10 inch pneumatic wheels that you fill up. You can use an air compressor or a bicycle pump. You're gonna to wanna to fill that to about 35 PSI. It's got a 350 watt, 36 volt motor inside, which gives us a top speed of around 20 miles per hour, which clocks in for my fellow Canadians at around 32 kilometers per hour, which is crazy great. The range on this bad boy is quoted at 30 miles, which equates to 48 kilometers. And we also have this back brake here. We also have a back light and a front headlight. Let's take a few rides on this bad boy, shall we? Let's see how it handles going uphill. and the braking system works pretty well, even on a downhill. Streetcar.
absolutely love the fact that it does have a removable battery design so you can swap out batteries or charge them and you don't need to bring the scooter with you. It charges in about five to six hours to full from dead. And as you can see here, it handles bumps and uneven ground pretty well from these large pneumatic 10 inch tires. It does not have any built in shocks, but I wouldn't expect that at this price point. They've really sort of nailed this scooter as a great all around buyer um, at any skill level. If you're a casual or a beginner rider looking for something for some fun or as a hobby, it's great for that. But what's also awesome is if you are, you know, more of a pro where you want to use this thing in more of a pragmatic way, it does have a good amount of power to it and it can travel quite a far distance. So, you know, think about commuting and getting around places or making deliveries. It is still powerful and professional enough for doing those types of things. It's hard to find many faults at this price point. And after having ridden this thing and letting some other friends try it out, it was nothing but smiles and a positive experience with the Turbo Ant X7 Pro. Okay, let's, let's, let's travel over here to our chair. So I've had this thing now for three years. Okay, my main issues with it is the white full leather does not hold up well after some time. Look at this. Look at my poor chair. Okay, so the faux leather chair, completely worn and torn, cracked to bits, cracked to pieces. And I've kind of just put up with it because it does look so great in the background of my videos. The other thing I should mention, as you can see, the armrest is also torn up. Uh, to bits and pieces here. So that's from the friction. It doesn't fully fit under my desk. So after some time, this actually started coming off. The other issue is the other arm of the chair has completely just broken off. So, I mean, it's, it's gone. It's gone. It started and came with two armrests, but now we only have one. Definitely not ideal after only three years or so, but it is a very nice looking chair and I, I do get a lot of people asking me about it in the comments and I've kind of kept it because it is such an iconic and, and awesome looking chair and I do really like the styling of it and how it looks in the background of my videos. So it's not the most comfortable chair either, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's an uncomfortable chair, it's, it's kind of right in the middle. But even with all these issues, I did try to purchase the chair again from Wayfair. I ordered it back in April, as you'll see on the screen here, and I waited month after month. Wayfair kept telling me, it's supposed to be delivered by this date, but it never did and it just kept getting pushed to be on back order. So with all that said, I decided to go with the autonomous Ergo Chair Pro. <gasps> okay, all right. Oh. This box weighs a lot. It does say that it weighs 64 pounds and to lift with caution. Seems to be another box inside of a box deal. Oh yeah. See, it's got this like see-through mesh to it. It's like a little transparent, so pretty much looks like something you'd find on a spaceship for the pilot's chair, so that's good. That's what we're going for here. Okay, so this is what everything looks like laid out on the table. Let's get to assembling it, shall we? Prop this over my shoulder and push each wheel in. Okay, not the easiest of tasks, but when they're in, they're in. So in the next step, we're attaching the armrests. So now we're basically affixing the main control mechanism to the seat. Ok, 
Okay, now for the fun part. Attach our back piece to the actual chair. Now it's time to lower the seat into the wheelbase with the gas lift. All right, found the hole, no problem. She's coming to life. Place the headrest at the top of the seat back. Another thing I really like about this is they actually give you a bunch of extra parts. Okay, so here you have it. The Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro, fully built, testing it out for the first time. It feels absolutely great. It looks absolutely great. It's got some good lumbar support. So it's got this all mesh back to it with the headrest as well. All this material here is mesh. It's very breathable. I like that it will pass through a bit of light. So it looks very futuristic. Overall, really like the aesthetic of this thing. So it not only looks great, but it's extremely functional as well. It also comes with a two year warranty, which you don't see often. It's usually a one year warranty for a lot of products. As you would imagine, this thing also comes with a myriad of different adjustments to fine tune it right to how you like it. It's a new era here. It's gonna be a new era with this chair in the background now. What should I do with the old chair? I don't know. It's, it's so cool, I do, I do love it, but it's totally falling apart as you saw earlier. I don't know, leave a comment below on what I should do with the old chair. Probably just go into the dump, but I don't know. Maybe there's a better idea for it. Maybe y'all can enlighten me. So if you wanna learn more about autonomous chairs, price links are in the description below. Okay, look at that. So it just added them all. Smart Floodlight, Smart Floodlight 2, Smart Floodlight 3, Smart Floodlight 4. So this means I can, you know, add them to a group and control them all together. <laughs> Maybe like an orangey, an orangey type of hue. I'm gonna set my two here because I need to take a thumbnail. Is this some good? Is this some good thumbnail action here? A little thumbnail photo shoot. Oh, 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 oh. It always feels so silly taking thumbnails. I'm completely blinded. All I see are LED lights in my face. But there you have it, the Nova Stella Blaze Smart RGB LED floodlights. Very useful. Very versatile. Let's test them out throw them up on the wall, see what they can do. Floodlights off, floodlights on. Four of them are laid out, pointing at my brick wall here, going to red, red going to blue, and blue going to green. These panels are all about how are you gonna use them to paint with light and to add some ambience to your own space, be it indoors or outdoors. They really are a great lighting tool for complementing and accentuating a space with mood lighting as they give off a ton of light for their price. So for example, I'm able to light up my entire brick accent wall here. You know, they're great for creating outdoor lighting scapes and moods. Most people don't realize you can get powerful RGB panels just like this and how huge of an impact they can have in lighting a space. I've seen this one on a lot of people's setups. I really like the look of it. It's a wall light. We were talking like Christopher Walken a little bit there. It's a wall light. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to redo it or not. No, we'll go with the Christopher Walken okay. take. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wall light. <laughs> It's really nice. You gotta check it out. It's really great. Boom! And here it is now. It's the Govi Glide. <laughs> I keep thinking about that Christopher Walken comment you made. The Govi Glide wall light. It's an RGB light for your wall. It's almost similar to a neon sign. You can put the angle at any place. So you can do it like this, so you can do it like that. <laughs> It's a wall light for your wall, and you can put it like this, you could do like that, you know, for your wall. It li every time I snap a piece in, I literally feel like I'm breaking this thing. That's just how it sounds. So there are three pin connectors uh, that connect to each other. This connects, this is, this is sort of like the power brick, so that connects to one end of your shape. Okay, no problemo. Computer, turn off key light. 
the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody's favorite part. Is everybody ready for the turn on? Is that center? Ready? Let's plug it in and see what happens. Nothing really happens. Oh, I was mistaken. I like that. Man, I like things that light up. It, it really, it really kind of goes with the whole aesthetic. Like I should just do the videos from now on. Maybe I should just keep this and, and mount it to the table. Is that a crazy idea? It's probably crazy. It's pretty awesome, not gonna lie. But oh wait, it gets better. So it's pretty cool, because you can actually custom set this to any sort of spectrum of color that you want. I'm not gonna do that. Let's just go right to the scene modes, because that's what everybody wants to see. So we just lowered the ISO on our B camera here. Maybe that'll let the color of the light come through. But that's ocean, forest, whoa! Pretty snazzy, if I do say so myself. Sunset glow, rainbow, okay. Oh, wow, that's a really cool effect on your shirt. Keep, keep that is that, yeah. is that, oh, 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 oh! oh. Closer, but, yeah. Shout out to the Into the AM shirts. Link is in the description below if you wanna pick yourself up one of these shirts. I actually just discovered in a previous video that these shirts glow with particular types of colored light and they create a really cool effect. So it's kind of a hidden Easter egg in these shirts. So I'm not gonna go through all of these, but you know what, there are a ton of them. Oh, I, I do always think the funny tab is funny. Stacking. Greedy snake. Who's naming these presets? I want that job. Strike. Bubble. I'm liking bubble, that's pretty neat. Alrighty, so here I am mounting my Govi Glide. I realized as I was mounting it, there are actually tabs on the back that are Velcro, which is a pretty cool addition. Just peel the little sticker part and stick them onto the wall. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. The strip, as I've mentioned, is configurable in a bunch of different ways, depending on how you want to shape your Govi Glide. I've seen people mount it as a border around their TV. I've seen people mount it around their desk, in their living room, bedroom. You know, the possibilities are really endless for where you can put this. The Govi Glide in all of its glory. It is the Colson Indoor Smokeless Fire Pit. That's right, it is a concrete fire pit specifically designed to bring campfires from the outdoors into the comfort of your own home. They do come in a few different variations, a hexagon one, a hexagon small one, a hexagon large one. They make a skull one, they make a square one, a hex Tesla one, and a big rectangular one. Now, uh, here is number two. And for number three, I actually have to stand up to get this thing, because it's it's pretty heavy. Oh, I honestly don't know which, which one is in here, but we have three to open. We're going for all three, baby. We gotta. Okay, moment of truth time. Okay, she's burning. Computer, turn off key light. You kinda gotta let it burn a little bit. Can you believe this? Wow, 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 wow. It's an indoor fire pit. This is, this is awesome. I really think 
anybody who enjoys fires, and it's putting off some good heat. Like, it's, it's like a nice way to keep warm. This would be an absolute great gift idea. I could think of a lot of different people who would like one of these. So what do we do now? Marshmallows, graham crackers, chocolate bars, baby! Bap, bap. <laughs> Man, I haven't made a s'more in quite some time. I gotta tell you. Ooh, you know what, it's getting nice. Personally, I like just to the point where it's starting to get brown. You know what, I should have got my chocolate ready beforehand. So that's a bit of an oversight. So now I'm gonna try to get chocolate ready with one hand while roasting the marshmallow with the other hand. Okay, pour it in your, your pit here and, and say, oh, oh, that's not good. Definitely didn't want to burn it. Well, I hope you like a little burn on your mallow, bud. <laughs> so we're taking the stick out. Oh, she's good. She's good, bud. Perfect. You know, the heat from that marshmallow, which sort of melts the chocolate into one delightful and amazing experience. Cameraman, I'd like to give, oh! I don't want to burn my, oh. my hand. Oh. Let's, let's, give oh. you, let's give you the first, uh, the first try here. I right, shoot this. Mm. How are we feeling about that? She about satisfying? We're gonna have to make a couple more, I think. Wait, are we gonna have to make a couple more? <laughs> oh, bud. All right, well, let's, let's get to it. I love them. I'm totally sold. Nothing but great things to say. They're a lot of fun, fun little activity. A crowd pleaser, no doubt. This is the Future Space Collective. We explore the world of products for imagination. What will I come up with next to feature on the channel? Stay tuned.